thank you very much for the introduction. Good afternoon, everybody, and I will shortly introduce myself. Uh, my name is Irene Mulandova, and I'm head of cell technologies in 3D Biogenic Solutions. I was trained as cell biologist at Cancer Research Center in Moscow and after uh, at Northwestern University in Chicago. And I worked uh, with Big Pharma for 10 years uh, in drug discovery. And after I switched to bioprinting and I joined 3D Biogenic Solutions. And I'm happy to present today my talk about bioprinting in space, new possibilities in biofabrication. So first, let me introduce shortly what bioprinting is. Bioprinting can be defined as rare, bi rare additive, additive biofabrication of 3D tissues and organs using tissue spheroids as building block according to digital model. Build tissue spheroids are actually cell aggregates. So you, you could sh see them here. And they include hundreds to thousand cells. Uh, actually, 3D bioprinting is now on a raising uh, trend, and you could see from this Gartner hype uh, graph, <laughs> I will show that here, uh, that uh, 3D bioprinting in life science, 3D bioprinting of human tissues, and 3D bioprinting of human organs for transplantation are now in rise. And actually, market reports um, suggest that during the um, next five years, this market will be from one to two billion dollars USA, and optimistic research says that by 2030, uh, this market will reach 10, uh, 12 million dollars. Uh, 3D bioprinting is pretty similar to conventional 3D printing. So also you need computer-aided design, design of organ, which is prepared by computer. And after, by this model, the organ or human tissue, piece of human tissue, is printed rare by rare piece and piece. Uh, for uh, produce human tissue, we need biopaper and bioink. Biopaper is kind of scaffold uh, for Barring, and this is mostly artificial scaffolds from synthetic materials or some scaffold from natural materials like collagen, fibrin, and so on. Barring, in case of our company, are tissue spheroids, uh, and also it could be just cells or cell suspension embedded already embedded in hydrogel. And of course, you are going to need 3D bioprinter to produce um, the organ. Uh, 3D bioprinting, sorry, 3D bioprinting is now going on commercial phase. Uh, so many companies are producing 3D bioprinting for selling, and most part of these printers are extrusion type, uh, micro uh, injection type, and laser based bioprinters. All these bioprinters use scaffold. Uh, for bioings or tissue spheroids in our case to hold this material together and also they use nozzle based approach that means that tissue spheroids or cells are going through the nozzle. So these two parts are mm, not so likely mm, for cells, they could damage cells, cells could suffer from shear stress. So our company are working on the approach without nozzle and not using scaffold, and I will talk about this late, slide later. Uh, if you want to buy any commercial 3D bioprinter, you are welcome. So Envision Tech from Germany produced first uh, commercial 3D bioprinter. Organova, which is really famous for collaboration with Big Pharma, also, of course, has their own printer. Cell Inc. from Sweden is a really amazing company arising uh, recent years because they became first profitable by printing company and they sell 300 printers to 40 countries. If you want to solve a really hard task, you could go to Regenhut from Switzerland because they produce the most sophisticated bioprinters. And Rocket from South Korea are developing not only printer but whole line of pro uh, for producing human tissues or organs, including incubator, bioreactor, fermentation. Our company also produced our own printer uh, several years ago. This is a bioprint of extrusion type, its name is Fabion, and uh, there its uh, features, interesting features are that 
it could print separately buying and bio paper, not mixing them, because sometimes bio paper could be uh, during the processing quite toxic for cells. And another feature I like the most, because I participated in this work, uh, our printer could print by single tissue spheroids one by one, preventing the uh, anticipating prefusion of tissue spheroids in the nozzle of printer. So using this printer, we've created a mouse thyroid gland construct, and this work is published in Biofabrication in 2017. And uh, we proved that our construct is vascularized and completely functional in tests in vivo. Uh, I would like to introduce you shortly to tissue spheroids, which I already mentioned many times. So tissue spheroids are cell aggregates and cells forming these spheroids, it, like from 100 to 1,000 cells. Uh, tissue spheroids have a theoretically um, highest theoretically possible cell density. Just imagine, like, one bioprinter is delivering just one cell in shot, and you deliver thousands of cells in one shot. Because cells are living creatures, and uh, processing and printing could take hours. Just put attention on these numbers. So better to shorten time of printing, because cells need special condition during the printing, not to suffer from shear stress and other conditions. Uh, tissue spheroids have a really round shape, as you could see, and uh, they're really convenient during manipulation uh, on bioprinting stages. But the most important and remarkable feature of tissue spheroids, they could fuse or self-assembly, then closely put uh, and touching each other. So when you put tissue spheroids close enough when we're attaching, they began to fuse self-assembly and during 24 hours they will produce a sheet of tissue. So let's go to space. Why space? Actually, auto space is really produce a really uh, ideal conditions for printing because cells are not suffering from microgravity and centrifugal forces. In microgravity conditions, cells could grow, could show their biggest growth potential without any obstacles. The really known fact that crystals which are grown in space could be six cubic millimeters in diameter. When you try to go grow crystals on Earth, they just grow 0 0.5 cubic millimeters in diameter. And if you will um, compare the structure of these crystals, crystals produced in space will, be, will have more regular structure. Uh, when printing in space, um, we, can, we sh could uh, avoid scaffolds. We could not use this artificial support. So produced tissue will not have any artificial materials, which could potentially to um, induce inflammation when we will perform transportation to human. Uh, so a company made in space uh, performed experiment with NASA to show that 3D printers are working in microgravity pretty well without any problems. And this is a really good challenge that uh, we could print in space and produce any spare parts that astronauts could need on demand, on site, without expensive delivery to the spacecraft. And this opens the possibility, flexibility, autonomy for, cosmo for astronauts when some long-term uh, journey is planned, like everybody of you are hearing that in the next couple of years, human beings will be launched on Mars and uh, start colonization of Mars. Uh, other companies pushing together with 3D bioprinting solutions, uh, the engineering solutions for development uh, in space, so printing in space, are Boeing, Cassis, a French company, and Space Tang. Actually, Boeing claimed that they will produce launch system, and in a couple of years, they will uh, uh, deliver first human beings in Mars. Uh, back to, finally, we went to our printer. So we've created 3D uh, magnetic printer, which works on the principle of magnetic levitation. 
What is magnetic gravitation? Magnetic gravitation is suspension of any object against gravity on Earth using counterbalancing magnetic force. So we could say that magnetic field is actually expelling objects and um, assembling them together. I suppose everybody of you maybe heard or knows about levitating living frog, which brought and he came so per the IG Nobel Prize. But I like the another part of his story that several years ago he obtained a real Nobel Prize for graphene. So first we've we've um, developed experimental 3D magnetic device when um, two magnets are. Um, connected side by side and placed close to each other. And so they are creating the magnetic field with gradient. And here on this scheme, you see that um, uh, this uh, blue uh, part, uh, this is um, part of magnetic field with minimum gradient. And so our tissue spheroids or any object will be expelled to the center of magnetic field in certain experimental conditions. Uh, this is our first experimental printer, magnetic printer, and it has only one hole to insert the cuvette with tissue spheroids, with culture medium, in culture medium, and in special gel, and with some special um, uh, solutions which paramagnetize um, culture medium. And we've tried to create constructs, for, uh, cartilage constructs, and mouse thyroid gland constructs on Earth and test this magnetic device, keeping in mind that we want to create another printer for uh, space uh, printing. So we've tried our magnetic printer first with polystyrol beads, which is here on the B. And after, when we tested all bags and some uh, problem, we've tested the printer with tissue spheroids. In this case, tissue spheroids were prepared from chondrocytes, this is cells for cartilage, and these tissue spheroids are called chondrospheres in this case. And just put your attention that we've obtained this nice round construct, in this case, this is cartilage construct, only in 30 seconds. Like uh, conventional 3D bioprinters are printing this piece of tissue during hours. And using our magnetic prints, it's possible to create this in 30 seconds. When we've created mouse thyroid gland construct by the same way, using our magnetic printer, and we've checked the tissue with histology and scanning electron microscopy, and we didn't find any um, artificial, any problems in tissue, and um, the thyroid gland construct was completely functional. Uh, here goes the movie. I suppose I have to show it here of our experimental magnet, magnetic printer. And here you could see how tissue spheroids are assembling on the center. That shows what is going on the center of magnetic printer. Uh, in the center of magnetic field, tissue spheroids are going together. Uh, they're holding together by magnetic field. We're not using special artificial scaffold to hold them together. This is just magnetic working of work of magnetic field. And when left for 24 hours, tissue spheroids will fuse and produce the tissue. But for phase experiments, which we plan by the end of this year, and we have already agreement with Roscosmos, and a big part of our team is now working on this project, we've created special magnetic printer, 3D magnetic printer for space experiment. It has uh, six position for creation of construct and six cuvettes could be inserted in one shot in this bioprinter and produce six constructs in time, in one time. Oh, sorry, I have to show the video. So this is view of our magnetic printer going in space. Six cuvettes are going to be inserted in the magnetic printer. It began to produce a construct. On the next slide, you could see 
uh, more details about uh, parts of a printer. This is queued where actually process of tissue uh, through its assembly in the construct will occur. And this is a special device to deliver six curves to the International Space Station. And here you could see our magnetic printer from different points of so few different sites. This is diagram showing uh, our space experiment. Uh, so first we will produce of, uh, cells, culture cells, and culture them enough to produce tissue spheroids uh, to perform uh, production of construct from 100 spheres and mouse thyroid gland construct. Uh, put these tissue spheroids in six cuvettes. Uh, tissue spheroids will be in special culture medium and hydrogel. And all of them will be with magnetic printer will be sent to International Space Station. And there, astronaut will perform our experiment, which are working now. Uh, so uh, on International Space Station, using our 3D magnetic printer, we'll produce construct of human cartilage and mouse thyroid gland. After in these cuvettes, the constructs will be fixed and returned to Earth to perform profound analysis of tissue. And so to summarize my talk, we, 3D bioprinting solution, have signed agreement of, with Roscosmos to perform experiments on the International Space Station by the end of this year. And during this experiment, we will use new approach of 3D bioprinting using microgravity and not using any artificial scaffold and any artificial support. Experiment will produce uh, the concept of mouse thyroid gland and human cartilage. Uh, and after that experiment, magnetic printer, which is named organ out from organ automation, will stay as a part of scientific, scientific equipment on International Space Station and could be used for another research, for other researchers and so on. Uh, so thank you for attention and I am happy to take your questions. Any questions for Elena? Not even one. Oh, yes, <laughs> lovely. I'll, please ask and I'll repeat. Yeah, actually, like one second. So, <laughs> uh, the question was about the applica concrete applications for this. Uh, so there are uh, two main uh, fields of application of 3D printed tissue. First, which is developing more quickly, this is drug discovery. So to produce human tissue from the patient to test um, with uh, um, this uh, uh, tissue with special drug created for uh, a combination of drug created for this patient, of course, for transplantation. So uh, for tissues which will be created in space, we could uh, tell that, uh, yes, we are going to use it for transplantation during long term journeys, like uh, considering journeys to Mars. And there is another project, I could mention it shortly, we are now working on printing uh, human ovary, and you know that there is a problem of space radiation, and so when I understand that this sounds like a far, far future, but we should think about that, that uh, people will arrive to Mars, they should to produce any kids and another generation, and we don't know how radiation will influence their abilities. So if we will produce in a, before this uh, flight any human ovaries from these astronauts and keep them frozen and after freeze and to, like transplant to these people, so this problem will be solved. So my uh, answer is yes, it's for transplantation, human transplantation. Wonderful, give a big hand to Elena. Woohoo!